What's up, everybody? Today we're going to be changing the sway bar end links on a Lexus LS430. It should be the same on a GS430 or an SE430. Uh, and the first step we need to do is ideally you want to make sure that the car is level, right? In a garage or something like that, or just level on the street. Um, if you do have a hill, you want to make sure you have your wheel chocks. Uh, but I do wheel chocks anyway, even when it's on a level. Um, level ground so wheel chalks you want to have something like that and the first thing we want to do is loosen up all the lug nuts on the front so on both sides we want to loosen those up you don't want to take them all the way off you just want to loosen them so that you don't have to deal with um, rocking the thing from it being too tight while it's already jacked up after we loosen them up we're going to jack the car up and i'm going to show you where the jack points are on the ls430 in a minute few safety tips. Once you take the tire off, put it right there. Yes, if the car falls, it'll ruin your rim, but it'll save your life. Have some goggles on. Put some knee pads on so you're not messing up your knees. And another thing I do, in addition to the jack stands, I leave the jack under there just with a tad bit of pressure so that if one of those or both fail, this will catch it and it'll let me get by me some time so I can get out of the way. One thing to note when you're loosening up the lug nuts, you want to make sure that you loosen them up as well as tighten them up in a star pattern. So if you start here, you want to go over there, down to there, then up, then down. You do that because you release the tension equally uh, off the wheel. Now we're going to jack the car up. And generally on most cars, you would find the jack point around here somewhere underneath the car. But on the LS430, and probably the GS as well as the uh, SC, the jack point is actually in the middle of the car. It's right here where you see that bar it looks like a little piece of rust right there. Uh, but that's the jack point. It's a hole. Not the plastic, but right behind it. There's the jack point there. So we're going to go ahead and get our jack and jack it up. For this type of situation, you want a low profile jack. And you got to be careful because... Uh, the previous owner or somebody else who was working on the car broke the bumper here by letting it down improperly. So I'm going to show you how to let it down too without having this type of issue.
few safety tips. Once you take the tire off, put it right there. Yes, if the car falls, it'll ruin your rim, but it'll save your life. Have some goggles on. Put some knee pads on so you're not messing up your knees. And another thing I do, in addition to the jack stands, I lead the jack under there just with a tad bit of pressure so that if one of those or both fail, this will catch it and it'll let me get by me some time so I can get out of the way. Now I'm gonna walk you through this because it's hard to get some of the angles and some of this stuff is kind of tight. But the first thing you wanna do is loosen this up. Um, it's easy to do right now because there is tension on this. So you don't need the wrench on the back part. If it does end up spinning for you, well, you'll need the wrench. Uh, this was kind of seized on for me, so I had to use my power tool. But what you want to do to get easier access to it is put the car in the on position. Don't start it in the on position. Turn this wheel all the way to the right or all the way to the left, depending on what side you're on. Then it'll give you a lot of room to loosen that up. But before you do that, you wanna loosen the bottom up while it's straight because there's easy direct access to it. Um, this is very easy to loosen up. You don't have to put anything on the other side, so you loosen that up. That is also a 17 millimeter. I'm about to hit that now, loosen that up. So I'm about to loosen this up right now. Gotta make sure it's going the right way. It's on number one, which might not be enough. It's not. Let's put this on number two. That's loose. Now, actually, let's get it all the way off because it's not going to come out of place. There we are. So that's off. Now what we're gonna do is turn the car in the on position. Oh, I don't have the key. All right, so now we're gonna put the car in the on position. All right, and we're gonna turn it all the way to the right. Boom, that's it, turn it back just a little bit. Then I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to grab my glove. All right, now I'm going to go grab my little small impact here. And because this has tension on it already, I don't need to put anything on the back side of it. So I'm going to finagle this thing in there best I can here. You don't want it angled. There we go. And let's. There we go. Oh, darn. Okay, it's spinning on the back. So if this happens to you, you got to put your camera down. And we get us a wrench here. We're going to put it on the other side of, on the other side of this. Now, if you want to be super safe, which is what I would recommend because you have to reuse these. You want to use this end, not this other end because that could probably strip it out. So we're going to put that on there and then I'm going to just do what you just saw me do. All right, so now that I got the camera on the tripod, I'm going to put this here. There we go. See that spinning? It shouldn't be a big deal. And there we go. Power right off. Hello. And let's see if we can back this out. Oh, we were able to back it out. So I'll take that out. And As you see, if we just try to take this out, this has nowhere to really go. It's impossible. This has to get on the other side of the sway bar. So we use our pry bar here. We need a big one to reach all the way back there 
push up. Uh. Okay, hold on. Let me turn this around. And we're going to make sure this is push up. All right, here we go. And we're out. Now we need to get the other one. And look how much play that has. Uh, that's a lot of play, but I don't think it's enough to really cause a clunk, but let's hope it did. Because if that's not what caused it, that would mean I need a new shock. And I don't want to deal with these air shocks, okay? So. All right, this is the brand we got. We got Mevo Tech. Uh, I got Mevo Tech because it has a lifetime warranty. And generally, these are pretty good. I haven't had any issues with them in the past. So, um, yeah, I got it from Rock Auto. All right, so getting this bad boy back on. This nut right here is a different size. If you're getting the same parts that I got, um, or, you know, obviously if you're working on a different car, it's gonna be a different size nut, and your sway bar link might even look like this, but um, we're going to first figure out what size this is. All right, so for me, it's gonna be a 19 millimeter, where is it at? 19 millimeter socket, all right? So let's go ahead and uh, unscrew this. Let me get my other glove. Yes, yeah, safety first. So we're gonna unscrew this. Boom. And now we need to like shape this thing so it can fit in there. All right, so we're gonna do that. That won't work. We're gonna push it in like that. Boom, slip that head in first. Let's look through the bottom. Then, we we'll have to pull this back a little bit. And boom, right now we see, all right, we're in a little bit of trouble here. Like we need to back it up, back it up, back it up. Okay, so we're right here. And now we gotta lift this thing up a little bit. All right, so let's do it and lift that up. Boom, there it is, done. Now all we gotta do is the reverse. So let's move this back a little bit, move that back, push this in, move that back, and got this bad boy here, stick that through. Does it match, does it line up? Let's bend this forward a little bit, pull this out. Does it line up? Not looking like it's lining up. So, let's see. If I push down on it, if I pull up on a bar, okay, there we go. There we go, we got it. Put this back on. Put this back on. All right. And now that's on finger tight. So let's do the bottom screw. We're just going to push this in. All right. Then we want to take our washer that was on there, put that on. Oh, can you see? You can kind of see it through there, can't you, huh? Yeah, you can. All right, so I'm going to put that washer on. I messed up. I missed. And now I'm going to put the new nut on there just a little bit.
All right, so everything is finger tight now. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and tighten this up while it doesn't have any tension on there. So I got lucky on this side. The other side, I had tension on there. If you have tension on yours, you're gonna to wanna to jack this up a little bit so that this can be freely moved around. And then you wanna tighten it to spec. On the LS430, it's 41 foot-pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So my torque wrench, boom, set that to 40. It's already set to 41. We're gonna get our wrench here. On the other side. And we just crank. Forty-one foot pounds is not that tight, so shouldn't have any problems. Unless your arm is sore like mine. All right. There we go. Forty-one. Now we got to do the bottom, which is also forty-one. So what we're going to do now, since this is turned, I'm going to go back in the car and I'm going to straighten this out. We're going to get back here. You can't see that, but all I'm going to do is just tighten it up. Now we're going to put our tire back on. Another thing you want to make sure you want to do is make sure that when you put the tire back on, it's flush up against the rotor. I know it really can't. Okay, there you go. So the line, you want to make sure it's flush up against the rotor and that there's not any uneven gaps. Maybe even spin it to make sure it's not wobbling. I'm going to check the other side. Looking fine. All right. So now what we want to do, you don't want to tighten it up while it's jacked up like that because you can knock it off. Look at that Viper. <laughs> uh, so what you want to do, go ahead and jack it up. Boom. And I'm doing this with one hand, I'm strong. And then we want to take our jack stands, slide them away, move our cardboard, slide it away, and with the handle down, not up, because it'll hit that bumper and it'll crack. See, that's what happens before. So you see how this is up. You don't want to try to loosen it up now. You want to just jack it up one more time. And while it's low like this, turn it and lower it slowly. I'm going to need two hands. Now the last thing you want to do, not the last thing, second last thing you want to do is secure the wheels by tightening them up to spec. And generally, most cars like 80 foot pounds. So I'm gonna probably do like 82. And then we can take it for a test drive.
right, now if you notice, I didn't clean up. The reason I didn't clean up is because you never know if the job is really done. You have to take it for a test drive to make sure. Now, sway bar end links is pretty straightforward. As long as they were tightened up the spec, you should be good. But we're going to go take it for a test drive to see if that solved our problem. Phone might be a little crooked, but this, you know, this whole setup is shaky. It wouldn't stick to the um, face on. So let's go ahead and pull out of the garage while this thing kind of gets its juices flowing. So far, everything looks good. Except my glasses on. So what are some symptoms of needing new sway bar end links uh, and why did I replace it? So when you drive and go over like even the smallest bumps, you'll hear like And then sometimes when you hit a bump, the steering wheel, you know, might, you know, feel different, might jerk a little bit. So here we go. I hit a, a pothole, and then after that, I started experiencing the little, blah, 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 blah. darn it, I heard it already coming out of the driveway. So, doesn't look like the end links were my issue. But we're still going to drive it just to see how it performs, how these new sway bar end links perform. Yeah, it's still. So it looks like my issue is a strut. <laughs> ah, no. Huh. I'm about to make this U turn right here feels the same which to me I think that's a good thing it feels the same as as stock and it's not like Lexus makes bad parts so anyway I have to now think about what I'm going to do with the suspension Handles fine, handles the same way. So, hopefully, this video was helpful, and hopefully, you have better success with yours. And it's not a blown strut, specifically if you have air struts. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.